Hello everyone. So today uh, I'm going to conduct the lecture, which is very, very informative for the student who are pursuing their career as a physiotherapist in Canada. And this is really informative lecture for you guys. If you have any query, feel free to contact me. Now let's start. I'm going to invite my students. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to uh, join the students and then we will start. Hello everyone, it is a really informative lecture for the physiotherapist who is just planning to come to the Canada and uh, I'm going to wait for the few student and then I will start. Okay. So how's your day, everyone? It's the Saturday as per the Indian time. Okay, let's go. Okay. Let's start the lecture. So, they will mind one is wonderful. Thank you for asking. So this is a lecture basically for the Canadian preparation. You are all the physiotherapist and when you are going to the Canada, either on the student visa or the permanent residency status. So anywhere status, status is a different, but when you are planning to work as a physiotherapist in Canada, you need to be a license holder. And for that, you need the whole process. Like you should understood this process and then you have to apply, start this process before going to the Canada. And that is very, very important. Everyone is able to listen my voice? Perfect. Okay. So Global Physio Academy, I am the honor as well as the instructor in the academy. In this lecture, I'm going to give you the guidance about the process, how to become a physiotherapist in Canada. So you are a physiotherapist, but as a physiotherapist, whenever you are uh, going to the Canada, you need to first uh, perform the credential, okay? So what is the step? Step-to-step -step guidance to become a physiotherapist in Canada. And that whole process is conducted by the College of Physiotherapy, like CAPR, sorry, Canadian Alliance of Physiotherapy Regulator. And that is called as the PCE. So first of all, Global Physio Academy, this academy basically conduct the PCE written classes. So PCE is an exam, physiotherapy competence exam. 
it has a three part uh, like three part first is the credential second is the written exam and third is the practical exam okay so global physio academy it is responsible or it provide the written classes for the student so they are well prepared for the exam they should know what to read where to read how to read and it is very very important for you guys so pc written classes only for canada and all the classes are conducted by me so i know my student where they are and what they are looking for and where they have to focus so i'm personally give guidance to them and i'm happy with this thing because this really gives the student a direction and they are achieving their license very fast so it is very important for you guys okay so main thing is what is your goal going to the canada it is a different story you can go to the canada as a student visa you can go to the canada as a permanent residency but after entering in canada what is the next step you are not just like going to the canada you are you want to work as a physiotherapist and for that you need to plan at least like one year ahead so what is your goal that is your very important thing keep in your mind that this is very very important how to prepare where to prepare okay and that's why this is seminar for this seminar give you the idea or like idea as well as the guidelines for the credential and what to do for the written exam okay if you have any doubt you can contact me on my cell number as well as you can contact me through the email any time i am happy to the help to the student okay so main thing is you have to go with the goal for achieving a goal you need to perform the proper action and then finally you are getting the achievement okay so you need to get the target that i want to become a physiotherapist in canada and for that i need to work step by step it is not easy but it is not impossible if you are going thoroughly you can achieve it if i am giving my introduction so i am like uh, i went to the canada in year of 2014 since 2015 i am working as a physiotherapist in canada i am not only the canadian uh, like physiotherapist i also have the us the physiotherapy license as well so it is the thing is you need to focus where to get it what to do it that should know and that is easy for you to get the direction okay now this is an important question for you guys licensed physiotherapy in canada so if you want to get the license you need to pass through the three different steps the first step it is considered as the credential second step so once you are done with the first step you get the letter that your study is equivalent to canadian study once you are getting this letter then you are eligible for written exam for the written exam student has three try once you have like you need to uh, focus with the written exam i should say written exam your uh, first trial is the final trial never like depend on the second trial so never ever think that you have a three trial always go with the first trial and first trial is the last trial so prepare like that way another thing is once written exam is done you if you pass so definitely you have to work so hard to get the pass certificate okay so this is your one and only chance then and then you are able to pass otherwise if you are thinking oh i have a three chance it is always delay so i want to go with the step credential you can done when you are in india and for you guys it is a good news that you also can give the written exam from the india but it is depend depend on you if you want to give the exam in the canada 
as well as in India, it is very, very easy. So once credential is done, you are eligible for the written exam. And if you pass the written exam, you are able to work as a resident PT. So you are working as a resident PT. So resident PT is a, like one step junior than the registered PT. So now let me explain. First is a resident PT. And second is the registered PT. So resident PT means once you are done your written exam, you get the uh, passing certificate. After that, you are eligible to apply for the resident PT license. But for that, you need mentor. Mentor is easy, like it is not too tough. Mentor means those who are working in Canadian environment for more than three years, they are able to become a mentor for the student. So you need mentor and you are getting the license and you are working as a physiotherapist. All the responsibilities, everything is same. Salary structure is little down, but almost you are way, way higher. Once you are working as a PT, resident PT, and you are applying for the clinical exam, if you clear, so clinical exam also has a three trial. Once you clear the clinical exam, you are you become the registered PT. That is a permanent license. So far clear, everyone, just a rough idea. So first is the credential. We will discuss in detail what is credential. Second is the written exam. And third is a practical exam. Global Physio Academy, uh, I'm just conducting the written classes, which is the first step. And I'm really happy for the student that those who are entering in the Global Physio Academy, they are getting the good marks. They are getting the good directions. And uh, it is very easy for them to prepare. So far clear, the just a rough idea. Everyone, Nancy, Sakshi, Kavan, Devanshi, everyone. I hope you got, got the idea. Okay, perfect Devanshi. So, yeah, go ahead. Anyone? Any question? Perfect. Okay. Now, credential, written exam, and clinical exam. This is your flow. So, first flow is the what is credential. And that is important. You should know what is credential. So the terminology credential means it is the verification process. Credential, it is a very basic step. You must done all these things when you are in the India, like home country, not only India. Whoever the uh, physiotherapist from other countries, they should start all these process through their home country. So it is easy for them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think somebody have some someone's mic is on. Okay, perfect. So credential process, it is a verification process. Everyone, if they are planning to come to Canada, I want, like I'm suggesting, it is their choice, but I'm suggesting they should start their process right away. Like as when they are, they are done with the internship or the mid of the internship. Okay. So it has a five criteria. First criteria is verification of identity through the authentic and valid documentation. Criteria number two, completion of university level entry to practice degree in physiotherapy. Criteria number three, successful completion of minimum 1025 hours of supervised clinical practice. We will discuss. But these are the criteria for the credential. Criteria number four, they should be fluent either in English or in the French. 
and criteria number five, the knowledge of practice of physiotherapy within the Canadian healthcare system. Okay, if I'm giving little focus, first is basic, your identity. That for example, I'm Mamta Kansara. So my identity is my passport. So passport, my driving license. So if I'm in the Canada and I'm applying for the credential, I can submit my Canadian driving license. So all the valid documentation. Uh, if the married person, so they should provide their name change. So marriage certificate, that is also the identity document, but marriage certificate has to be notarized. Okay, so it, it has to be done with the lawyer. Notarized marriage certificate is a, one of the identity document for the like married woman. For the male, it's normal. University level degree certificate. Degree certificate has to be submitted by the um, uh, uh, students. So that is the second stage. Third stage is 1,025 hours. Now this 1,025 hours is your overall hours throughout your first year to final year clinical practice. It is not the internship hours, okay? So this is different. It is not the inter internship hours. It is the normal hours that you are done throughout your uh, uh, clinical academy, like academic years. So generally third year and the final year students are rotating in the clinical practice. So that is the 1025 hours. It is not the internship hours. So that is very important to understand. Okay. Then the another thing is fluency in English or the French. So you should and there is a criteria we will discuss either ILGS, TOEFL, or there are five or six tests. So that is uh, they are able to like they are they can they give the criteria. There should be proper marks in each language. We will discuss, and that is mandatory for your credential. And last not least, it is the practice. The knowledge of the practice of physiotherapy within the Canadian healthcare system. So Canadian healthcare system, it is the different system. And all the international physiotherapists has to uh, pass this bridging program. So that is the bridging program. Six week online course you can do with your home country. Okay. I will give you the link where you have to enroll. But what is this? So as we are all working in, for example, India, I'm taking India as a country. So you are an Indian physiotherapist and now you are going to the Canadian market. So now you are working in the Canadian healthcare system. So this bridging program, giving you the certificate that your knowledge is, so not regarding physiotherapy, your knowledge regarding working in Canadian healthcare system. So this is the ethics. You should respect each and every patient. You have to be like uh, ethically work in the healthcare system. You have to work in the team member. You have to be polite. So this is all the ethics. And this is a, one of the ethical course applicable. It is not a physiotherapy course. It is the course which give you, which gives the Canadian idea about the Canadian healthcare system that you are now going to work in multicultural. All the people, some people are coming from the other countries, like the Russia, some are from the Europe, some are from the England, some are the Canadian person. Everyone is different. And you have to work as a team member, as the physiotherapist, you have to respect to that person, you have to respect to your and you should not be like, you should not be going beyond your ethics. So whenever you are working, you have to work with the ethical way. So this is for that. So this course is a bridging program, mandatory. It is a part of your credential. Okay. So all the uh, international physiotherapists, they are uh, 
compulsory take approved online course that include the formal method of assessment to meet the requirement. Physiotherapy practice in the Canadian healthcare system that is called PT bridging program. It is six week online course. That course is approximately 500 to 550 Canadian dollar. It is provided either by the University of Toronto or OIPB or the IEHP. I am the I did uh, through the IEHP University of Toronto or University of the Alberta. There are a variety of the university which provide this course and it is a mandatory course. So this is total five packages. Okay, we will discuss in later one more time. But credential, it is the verification process. Once you are done in the home country, then you can start this process through your home country, verification of the identification, like identification verification, university degree, uh, degree certificate, clinical hours, English or the French fluency and bridging program. Now let's discuss the forms. Okay, so these are all the credential forms. Now, after 1st January 2023, they update the forms. So do not fill the old version. Always go with the latest version. Download the latest version and you can fill online. And then you have to do the printout. Okay, because of the signing. So first form is educational credential and qualification assessment. In that form, they are also providing the uh, credit card information or you can uh, fill this uh, bank draft. So that is your fee. Third form, so second form. So this is your one form. Second form is education credential and qualification assessment checklist. So checklist means it is like just the name of the form and the another column which gives you the idea that whether did you submit this form or not. That is called checklist. Third is the document request form and it has to be filled by the college. It's not by the exam channel. Yeah, Koshi, any question? Entrance exam just to do therapy in Canada, Martini, PC, and upper leg. Sorry? Okay. So the first form is the educational credential qualification assessment. Second form is the application checklist. Third is the document request form that has to be filled by the college. Okay. So these are the total three forms. Optional. So optional thing is needed for the consent to disclose the credential information. If you need it, it is not mandatory. Credit card. So if you feel like if you pay the fee through the credit card, you have to fill this form, credit card authorization form. Graduation verification sub form. This is something different. We will discuss later on. Change of information form it is generally not required. And request of academic documentation form generally it is not required. As if you requested that form, you need it, you can request to the college and college will submit. But generally for your overall credential, you need educational credential assessment form, checklist and documentation request form. And pay the fee either by the bank draft or credit card. Okay, so this is the overall idea. Let's go a little more detail. So far clear everyone? So this is the CAPR credential form link. Uh, first is the application form. So this is the latest form, 2023, January. If you click that one, uh, let me share my screen, just a minute. Everyone is uh, able to see the screen? Okay. So this is the Application, education, credential, and qualification assessment, you can type. So you can type that one, you can fill online. Okay. Initial application, so you have to tick over here. If, so 
this process credential up to two years. You can maintain that one. But if somehow you forgot to submit any documentation or you are not giving the idea, you have to reopen your file. Okay. So depending on your uh, criteria, you can fill that one. Um, date of birth. Client ID, it is for college. So once you are done, everything, then they generate the client ID. So it is not right now with you. You have to full legal name. So last name, first name, middle name. Former last name applicable to the married woman. So if my name, if you are like, I'm giving my example. So my marriage name is Pamta Kansara. Before marriage, my surname is different. So I'm going with my marriage name that is Kansara Mamta Milit. Last name, I'm going to apply as per my previous. Because my all the degree certificate, bachelor certificate is with my father's surname. So I have to provide former last name. But along with this document, I have to submit notarized marriage certificate. And one more thing, CAPR never accept any original document. So you have to go with the copy, okay? But notarized copy. Address. I would suggest if your relatives or sister or brother or cousin, if they are in Canada, you can apply the Canadian address. Why? Because once, let me explain that thing. So once every form, everything you submit to the CAPR, okay, submit to the CAPR, then CAPR review your file first, okay. So when they review the file, they generate client ID number. That client ID number, they either mail you, like email you, but along with that, they send referral document. So referral document, referral document, it is sent to the, so they are saying mail. They are mailing, mailing to the address. So it is not the email. It is the paper mail. And if you have a Canadian address, you are not supposed to pay $100, $100 or $110. It is extra. If you are in other country, if you are in Canadian, like you have a Canadian address, that fee is not applied. Okay. That's why I prefer if you have any relative who have a sturdy home address. It is not like they are living in the rental apartment and they are changing the rental apartment. No, because they should be there at least two years. Your process in between something happened, they are just giving the document back to that address. Okay, so the address should be there for a minimum two years. So I would suggest give the address if you have option, Canadian address, otherwise pay the fee and give your home country address. Okay, so this is the address thing. Email must be completed. Uh, Name of institute, so whatever. So I am from the civil hospital government. So government physiotherapy college, that is my name of institute. City, Ahmedabad, country, India, start date. So my academic year is 2004 to 2008. So I can do as per my academic year. Date, degree certificate was issued. So now some student, they are done with their internship, but they may not done, like they may not get the degree certificate. So that type of the student are also present. They can start their credential even though they are not receiving their degree certificate. Okay, so here you have to say it is in process, but along with that, you need to fill graduation verification. Certificate. So this graduation verification certificate, it is optional. If you have degree certificate, it is no need. If you don't have degree certificate, graduation verification certificate must be filled by the college. Okay. So those students who are done their internship or they are about to done, like so internship has to be done and then they are submitting the graduation verification certificate. Full title, whatever their degree certificate or just like my name is 
my father's name, that title I have to submit here. Then full title of the in native language. So my language is Gujarati. So I have to write in Gujarati, all these things. Somebody has a Marathi as a native language, some has a Hindi as a native language. So it is on and off. Depending on your language, you have to fill. Okay. Second is if you are applying with the check, tick here. If not, credit card, you have to tick here. So depending on your requirement. Now, this is important, number eight. So here, so same like in India, we have a state, right? Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tamil, Tamil Nadu, uh, like Punjab. So according in Canada, it is known as province. So province in which you expect to apply for registration. So you have to go with the first or second choice by writing number one, two. So you always write, so if you're going with Ontario, you're gonna write Ontario as a one. So generally the first is the only the option, but we have to fill depending on your requirement, British Columbia, Saskatchewan, any, any of that thing, you can fill it. Okay, I have a question. In formal last name, only surname is required or full before marriage name? No, only surname. So just a minute, I'm going with that point. So the point is formal last name. If any of the document are in the name other than name above. So yes, yeah, you have to fill full name. Okay. So my name is like Bhutbati Mamta Vijay Kumar. I just put everything. You have to go with your name. So whole name, whatever in your degree certificate. Okay, so academic certificate, whatever your name. One more thing, some student has the query. Some has the, for example, girl having a bahen or something like some certificate says father name as a Ramesh Kumar or the Ramesh Bai or only Ramesh. So these all are the variety of the thing. You have to put in one epidemic, go to the lawyer, make a copy, notarize it and submit here. Because all the name is the same name, otherwise they revert to you, okay? In native language, only degree name, yes. Native language, it is your native language. So it is clearly written, full title of degree. So we are not gonna written any of this. Degree means whatever degree certificate right, right. If you don't have degree certificate, whatever in your graduation verification certificate. So generally the same, you are getting in the degree certificate, you just put it as a native language. Okay, that's it. So you have to select the province number one, number two, and number three. Whatever is your first priority, you have to put it here. Don't change, okay? And it is not like compulsory. So if you've done your Ontario registration, you give, you so written exam all over the Canada is the same. So once you are done the written exam, for example, I did Ontario registration, and written exam for the Ontario, and I, I'm moving to the British Columbia. So just paperwork, I need to do it. And I, I like, I don't need to go with the again exam, okay? So that is the, keep in your mind. And uh, consent, so, okay. So here you have to do the printout, and then you have to sign this uh, form. And send it to this address. So this is the common for every province. CAPR 1243 is Lincoln Avenue, suit number 501, Toronto, M8X1Y9, Canada. That is your address for uh, post, okay? So this is your first uh, form that you have to submit. Now let's go with my slide. So far clear everyone? So this is the application form. Second is the application checklist. So application checklist, let's go with the form as well. Okay, sorry, I need to go with this. So this is your, okay. So this is your checklist. Complete application form, sign in dated. You have to go with the attach, put the tick mark. So print out this form and just do the tick mark. Um, money order, certified check, tick mark, identity document, passport. If you are in the Canada Canadian driving license, your PR card, any of that thing, copy, okay? Do not go with the original copy. 
notarized copy of the marriage certificate compulsory attach everything is notarized notarized copy of your degree certificate so these all student has to submit this is important to know so student has to submit to this eapr okay so this is done now this checklist so this is the first checklist that student has to send to the eapr now the second checklist is your college sorry college has to submit so college has to submit document sorry document request form so you have to put request okay academic record if you are in india so other country you have to follow the appendix 1 but particularly for the indian student transcript document request form and internship certificate that three thing and if you have no degree certificate so graduation verification certificate four thing college sent to the capr okay so this is important okay now this internship certificate if you are giving internship certificate to the capr you need to notarize that inter internship certificate but if college provide the internship certificate then you don't need to notarize college just submit so college has a separate envelope okay and it has to be mailed to the capr at the post office nearby the college okay so this is very important you need to go with the three courier first student second college in the college document request form transcript if you are not giving internship certificate by yourself college and language is not with the college it is another institute so this three and if you are not uh, what i can say if you are not the degree holder degree certificate holder it is in the process graduation verification certificate okay uh question is just a minute i have a question for the epidemic for name verification do we need to send original because of according to the lawyer it should be original which is required no in capr you are not submit anything original everything is notarized copy okay and another is ma'am can you please repeat the document name <laughs> okay the name will be repeat uh, in the other slide you will get don't worry okay perfect uh so this is your college has to submit now the third thing is okay so this is your another one let's go with my slide again okay application form checklist so this is student has to done okay identity document either passport or canadian driving license not the indian proof of legal name change marriage certificate notarized notarized copy of the diploma or the degree certificate so generally the degree certificate you are putting it if you put internship certificate okay internship certificate by the student then notarized otherwise college will submit on behalf of you so i am preferring college has to submit it is not my head so this is your forms p main thing so from 1st uh, january okay the fee will be assessment fee is 1486 so that is a final fee first fee if you recommend like you require some additional service then it is a 410 if you reopen after 2 years if you forgot to submit any document and 2 years is passed then after 2 years 546 if your check is rejected 48 canadian dollar if you need do duplicate 35 so these are all the fee structure you can easily get in from the website okay so i have a question now when all this form has to be filled when you are in internship so i will come this point okay i will uh, prab pravdeep okay i will come to this point when you gonna fill all the document 
in later on. Okay. So particularly for the India, there is the appendix one. If you open this appendix one, they are giving criteria for other countries like China, Filipino, Ukraine. But as per the Indian, like because all you are from India, Indian students, official academic records, that is mark sheet. Now clearly understood this point, mark sheet. It has to be submitted by the university. Okay. It is not submitted by the college. CAPR does not accept. So mark sheet is, has to be submitted by the university. Document request form, your clock hours, that is 1025 or more than that. Intensive certificate, everything is submitted by the college. But my university is responsible to send the mark sheet. So now you have a three courier. Okay, so you have to go with the three here. College, so who is asking me the name? So the name is college, submit the document request form, official transcript, and that is a copy of the transcript, okay? Not original. Graduation verification form as needed. So if you don't get the degree certificate, you have to, like college has to submit the graduation verification form and clinical practice hours that must be submitted by the college. University, all four years mark sheet. Okay, CAPR always accept. So a student should not submit on behalf of college. College must submit directly to the CAPR. If CAPR has a little doubt that student, some student or some relatives submit on behalf of the student, they are not accepting, they return it back. Okay, so college has to submit it. It pretend to be like college has to be submitted. All these forms, so all these forms is in one envelope and that envelope is submitted to the CAPR via college. Mark sheet, one envelope has to be submitted to the CAPR via university. Clear this thing, everyone? Or you need to be like, should I re uh, repeat again? Any question? CAPR required course syllabus, no. It is in NPD, USA, not here. So the question is, CAPR required course syllabus of PPT, no. Clear any question? You can ask me in the chat box as well. You can ask me directly as well, I'm okay. So far clear? Perfect. And this is the example of graduation verification form. If you are not getting your degree certificate, then you have to go with this graduation verification certificate must be submitted by the college. So name of the student, date of birth, full name and all this thing in the institute's stamp. For the student educated in the Bangladesh, India, Pakistan and the Philippines, to fulfill this requirement, school must submit a tested copy of the clock hours. And that is the transcript actually, okay? So the clock hours, it is your all four academic years, whatever you are going with the clinical practice, that is your clock hours. It is not the intensive hours, okay? And it should be minimum 1025, more than that is okay. And I already uh, give you the idea about the checklist. So this is your checklist colleges to do. So if you go with the uh, forms, just a minute, okay. So far clear now, student, so let's go one more time. Student, application form, checklist, identity document, name change, notarized copy of the degree certificate and credit card information or check. Without that, your process is not started. So this is your five thing. Now the question is, uh, what do you mean? Okay, okay. So first five things has to be submitted by the student. Now I have a one question through uh, when all this form has to be filled. 
I would suggest if you are planning to go to Canada, okay, and if you are like like you are done yeah. For example, you are a student, so once your internship is done, start process or gathering everything together because you need internship certificate. Okay, so you can start the process as soon as CABR accept your fee because CABR is little bit uh, like in the uh, like in the process of like delayed. This process take eight like they are giving the six months, five to six months, but overall it takes like more than six months depending on their uh, doc uh, like you know the documentation or the students those who are applying for the credential. So depending on their look. They are a little bit delayed, but if you want to go in, go to the Canada and you are prepared for the PC exam, I would suggest start your process as soon as possible. So uh, like as the final month of the internship, you can do it. Because if, for example, few certificate you didn't submit, so your credential process is not done, but at least they are started. Right, so you can submit your document in between. That is okay, but you can start your process if you want it. Very, very costly thing is your time, because once you are not going with the time, you are way delayed. So I want go with the time. Okay, so that is the thing. Now the another question is, thousand twenty five including clinical hours or excluding. What do you mean by including and excluding? Clinical hours means, so this, okay, let me explain what is 1025 hours. Third year. You are in the third year. You are going in the ICU. You are going in the neuro department, musculoskeletal department. No. So internship hours is not your 1025. It is not included. Whatever your second year, third year, and the final year clinical posting, that is your clinical hours. Okay. Internship six months is your paid hours. It is not your learning hours. Clear? Pradeep? Anyone, any question? So this is your student fact. Six things. Form, checklist, driving a leg, passport, marriage certificate on and off, depending on your requirement, degree certificate, and the credit card. Mm, college, document request form, transcript, graduation verification certificate, clinical practice hours, and one more thing, internship certificate. Okay? Because internship certificate, if college is provided, then you are not going to submit. But if college is not provided, you have to go with so student has to go with notarized, notarized, notarized internship certificate. Okay, so college has to go with the five. Rajvi, I will give you the answer of your question later on. University mark sheet. So these three different courier. Okay, make sure. College must send to the CAPR again and again, document request form, transcript, clinical hours, internship certificate, that four thing. And if you are required, the graduation verification is needed. Now the language. So, okay. One more question. In government college, we have a clinical posting from first year. So in our case, first, second, third, and fourth year clinical hours will be counted here. And in government college, your transcript, because I am from that college, government college, your transcript already explained the hours. We have our hours in our transcript, okay? Okay, come to the language. So now CAPR, in, like if you go through my, previous uh, recorded uh, lectures or I have a YouTube lecture as well. So I say IRTS Academic 7. But now from 1st April onwards, they change the rule. So they are now changing. You can give any of these six exams. Okay. IRT, so IRTS General, 
IELTS Academy. I prefer if you are a student, you need IELTS Academy. So do your best for the IELTS Academy that you can use for your credential and for your student visa. So student visa is a different and this credential is different, okay? And this is not WES credential. WES, they, so this is another organization. They do educational uh, credential for permanent residency status. Okay, so WES credential is not counted for your license. This is totally different. You are, you are doing this process to get the license for work. So you are working. This is your license to work. And WES, it gives the status in your in the Canada. Okay, so that credential is different. Now come to the point credential now, CAPR. Language, if you are going to the student visa, I Academy is good. Otherwise, you can go with the general as well. You can also give TOEFL. You can also give the Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program General. So these are the four English tests or two French. Test the evaluation do Francis or test the communication do Francis. This two is a French test. Any of that you can give. Question is Komal, I will give you the answer later on, or you can direct me, like you can ask me directly on my cell number, okay? Because this is not related to this uh, credential. Okay, come to the language. So, language. IELTS and we have a particularly uh, minimum score. You have to gain this score for your credential. Credential has uh, IELTS, reading and listening. You have to get minimum seven and writing and speaking 6.5. Now I have a question that you got overall 6.5. Doesn't matter. Now, CAPR does not say overall. They need this reading 7, writing 6.5, listening 7, speaking 6.5. General and academic both are seen. Okay. And if you are not achieving this uh, result, you have to give another time. Unle un unless you are getting the proper result. Okay. So you can give again and again. Once you are not submitting your IELTS result, up to that your credential is not done. But you can start your credential process and in between you can give the answer. Another is the Canadian English language benchmark. Reading nine, reading nine, writing eight, listening eight and speaking eight. TOEFL, 21, 21, 21, 21 for all the four component. And this is the French minimum marking. Any of one, any one test you can give. Okay, without this test result, you are not getting your credential document, but you can submit your document in between. So now let's go with one more time. Student, form A and form B is identity documentation. Before it is form B, but now it is not there. So exclude this. Form B is a checklist. Okay, so form B is a checklist. Form A, whatever I say, so two forms, fee, credential, identity documentation, if needed, legal name change, degree certificate notarized, and if you are giving internship certificate. So if you are giving internship certificate, then notarized, otherwise college will fill. College, form, official transcript, clinical hours, Graduation verification certificate needed and internship certificate. Okay. And university mark sheet. And the other test. So IELTS result, you are not going to submit. So whenever, for example, IDP or the British uh, Council, students are getting the IELTS test. So whenever you are uh, enroll yourself, you have to tell them one copy of uh, result has to be submitted to the CAPR through the official center, okay, IDB or the British Council, language test score, and your health course, bridging program, 
it is also submitted by the university. So you are not going to submit. Result directly sent to the CAPM. Now, what is this uh, health course? The knowledge of practice of physiotherapy within the Canadian healthcare system. So if you are educated outside the Canada, you must complete a course, a course on the knowledge of the practice of physiotherapy within a Canadian healthcare system. This course must include the formal method of evaluation. It is normal course. It is very, very easy for us. It's just how to meet the patient. You should respect. You should get the consent from the patient. So ethics. I'm just giving the screenshot. So the screenshot, this is a University of Toronto. Physiotherapy practice within a Canadian healthcare system. This course is approved by the Canadian Alliance Physiotherapy Regulated and meets their credential requirement. Six week online course facilitated by experienced Canadian physiotherapist. So you have to enroll this one. It is a IEPB. Okay. You can find out online. Yeah, I'm just putting the screenshot here. So question I'm getting is, do we have to inform IDP IELTS before the exam or anytime after the exam? Any, any of this thing is okay. Before the exam also you can say, or once you get the result, you can again email them that, okay, one of the copy of my result has to send to the CAPR through your center. So any, either way is okay. Okay, now, Okay, so we are done. This is called the credential process. Any of the questions so far, any of the college, university, your mark sheets or anything? Any question or you understood? So far clear? It is not a one-way process. Two-way is good. Is there any time limit for the same? For uh, So credential, I told you, once you start your credential, so basically see if I'm seeing current in a scenario, right now if you submit your uh, forms, they accept after two months. And they are clearing your, as your fee structure, so credit card is, uh, or the check is deposited, then your process is started, okay? So this is a little bit delay going on, but once they do everything from that day to two years, that is your time frame. But two years is more than enough. Uh, they were what you are asking for IELTS. Yeah, I'm I'm saying about the IELTS. In the IELTS, for example. IDP is your center. So I'm going to give the exam. So before that, I can say, submit my result to the CAPR. Or for example, I already gave the exam and I did not inform them. So once I'm getting the result, I have to inform them again that please submit my another copy of result to the CAPR. Okay, Rajvi has a question. In how much time we have to give exam after credential? Two years. So your credential, for example, today is uh, 6th May 2023. For example, today you submit the document. They accept approximately two months. Definitely you will count. I'm not saying ideal, okay? It is a uh, average. So May, June, July. For example, July, they start your process. From July onwards, two years, you have a time to done your credential. Once you get the letter, that your study. So once everything is done, you submit the document, they evaluate the document, they get the ID result, they get the online course result, everything they get it. So all the five criteria is done. Then they give the letter to the student. Your study is equivalent to the Canadian study. You are eligible for the written exam. The date when you are getting the IELTS, uh, sorry, when you are getting the CAPI later, that day, from that date onwards, within a two year, you have to give first trial of written exam. Clear?
perfect one more question is gspt or the iap registration is required mm, in the form they need an ask in the U usa it is required npt in the canadian like in the form they need an ask go with the form whatever they are asking you have to submit okay now acknowledgement so once they have processed your application and documentation, they will assign you the client ID. So once they process your P, they generate the client ID and email it to you. Credential status update will no longer available on the website as of the October 22. CAPR is in the process to transit all this electronic database, but not yet started. Um, when it is operational, they will inform you, but right now everything is by post. If you have any question, you can directly ask credentialing at alliancept.org. You can email them within a four to five business day, they will answer your question. One question, if I give IELTS today and I submitted CAPR form after IELTS score, so approximately one month after, Giving IELTS, can I ask IDP for some? Yes. Within a two year, any of the time you can ask them. Okay, so it is okay. And it is not mandatory that without giving the IELTS, you cannot start your CAPR process, credential process. You can start your credential process and then do the IELTS. That's okay. Okay, done. Any question or anything you are not getting in credential point of view? So we are, I'm just explaining credential portion right now. Is good. So far clear, perfect. I hope everything is clear. I, I can give you the idea about the, any, like your doubts. Now, my question is why it is important. It's like why I'm saying that, okay, go with the credential first, credential first, why? One more question. Do we have to fill CAPR in one shot? No. You can give, like I prefer go with the one, collect your document and then submit right away. It is very easy because it saves your time, but it is not mandatory. Time management, yes, Deval. Time management, time is the money. Actual money is not a money. Time is a money. Okay. So time is very important factor. Why? Let me explain you. Because if you are in home country, you can do it. If you are in other country, for example, you are already in Canada, you have everything. You have to, first you have to, used to be the new weather, used to be the new culture, used to be the new working environment. It is not like you are not working. You are working as a physio assistant. Then you can do it. Okay, without license, you can do physio assistant. But it is very basic job. What do you want to work? You want to work as a PTA or you want to work as a resident PTA? So everything is like so tired. And on, on the other side, everything you have to do by yourself. Your housework, your work everything okay in your home country you have a, a lot of flexibility you can approach your college you can approach your university you can go anywhere you are not worried about your work you are not worried about the housework everyone is there you can everything is prepared you just focus on your credential that's why i request you guys to go with your credential like when you are in your home country okay and I, I prefer start your PCE written, PC written exam when you are in final year. Do your homework. Credential. Because credential is a form. How much time it takes? 15 days. Maximum one month. Okay. Then you have to go with your IELTS. The IELTS you can do parallel. So you can 
do your PC written exam classes. You can go with the preparation and you can do IELTS. You are not going 24 hours everything. So it is your preference. I'm giving my suggestion. It is your preference, but you can prepare parallel. Focus on IELTS, band is required. Once band is achieved, Use the dual purpose. If you are going for the student visa, apply for the student visa and apply for the credential. Start your paperwork, submission, college, university. First, finish everything paper. Once everything is done, contact Global Physical. Start your preparation for the written exam because it is also important. So written exam, it is totally different than the USNPD exam. Canadian PC exam, it is the Vignet style. What is the Vignet? Now, this is the question. Now, we are done the credential part and I'm giving some idea about the written portion. What is the written exam and how this is conducted and what Global Physio Academy provide to the student? So, let's start your preparation with Mamta. PC with the Mamta, that should be the best thing. Okay, one more thing. I have a question. I'm going for IELTS exam first as I'm here currently and wanted to send document after the result come for time preparing PC exam. So is it possible for IDB to send my result to CAPR after they receive my forms? Mm, just a minute, I'm going one more time. I'm going for IELTS exam first. Wanted to send the document after the result came for time preparing PC exam. So is it possible for the IDB to send my result? Uh, yes, they will. Uh, IDB send the result, but they are not accepting your result until your fee is not submitted. Because they don't know you unless you are giving your, your part, identity document, form A, document checklist. Before that, they are not processing. They are not generate the client ID number. Okay, so client ID number is very important. Once it is generated, then everything is linked to that client ID number. So you can submit your result, that's okay, but you just has to be generated your client ID number and that is generated once your document is sent to the CA. Clear? Perfect. Okay. Now, PC with Mamta, Mamta Kansara. So blueprint, okay, so written exam, it is a structure and format of the written exam. There are total 200 multiple choice question. You have to fill within a four hours. So here also time is a limit. You have a four hours, 50 question per hour. It should be the very important speed for the student. And for my student, I'm going with this 50 question per hour speed. Okay, each multiple choice question has a stem that is a, so this is the beginning introductory part that present the questions or the problems and then for mcqs like the response you have to choose the correct one 90 percent questions are beginner style and 10 percent standalone question there is no negative marking all the questions are equally weighted sorry and correct response are worth one mark each Incorrect response, there is no negative marking. So I prefer go every application. So PC blueprint, uh, area of the practice, musculoskeletal, they are asking 50 to 55 percent, neurological 20 to 25 percent, cardiovascular and pulmonary 15 to 55 percent, and others 15 to 5 percent. And this is your domain. So they are asking variety of the things which center is the domain. So area of the practice, they are asking musculoskeletal with this much area, this much domain, okay? So physiotherapy expertise, communication, collaboration, management, leadership, scholarship, and professionalism, that is ethics. Ethics is must. In Canadian environment, ethics is must. And I am working in the Canadian environment. So be a Canadian physiotherapist, working in the Canadian environment, I am like, ethics is very, very important portion in your exam. Very, very important. So they are asking any area along with any domain. That is your way of asking the question. 
Okay, I'm just giving general idea about the blueprint. So I'm just giving example. So this is the vignette. Vignette means first they are giving scenario. So the question is 55 year old woman fell on the outstretched right hand while at work. She experienced immediate hand and wrist pain. Police fracture was confirmed on X-ray, so they already give you the diagnosis. After six weeks in the cast, client X-ray shows poor callus formation. She is reporting right shoulder pain and elbow pain. She is recasted and referred to the private physiotherapy clinic. So now this vignette you have to read properly. So I'm giving some strategy how to read the vignette. First of all, age. 54 years. What happened? Fell on outstretched hand. Immediate symptoms. Wrist pain. Diagnosis. Police fracture. Confirm. Duration. Six weeks is already done. Okay. Still, there is no healing. Recasted. And now new symptoms. Right shoulder and elbow pain. So they are giving variety of the options. And now... They are asking question. First question is, before initiating the treatment, physiotherapy describes, the physiotherapist describes the proposed, proposed treatment and possible outcome to the client. And this is an ethics question. If I'm a physiotherapist and some patient comes to me, it is my duty to explain them, hi, my name is Mamta Kansara. I'm here to treat you for your police fracture. Your physician referred you for the physiotherapy and physiotherapy help you to improve the range, improve the mobility and prevent the contracture. So I'm giving the idea what I'm going to do for her and what is the benefit of this exercise. For achieving my goal, I'm giving you some range of motion exercise, some stretching exercise and some functional movement. Now it is client duty whether they are okay with me or not okay with me. If, for example, Kushi comes to me with this scenario, I'm explaining everything and Kushi says, no, mom, I don't want to work with you. Thank you. I cannot force anyone. Okay? So, option is to allow the client to make an informed decision. So, already I informed decision is client about her treatment. Option B, to allow the physiotherapist to justify the intervention. It is, so ethically physiotherapist has to justify, but first priority is patient wish. Okay. Third is to prevent the client from asking too many questions. It is allowable. As many questions as they want to ask, it is your duty to explain everything. And to allow the physiotherapist to avoid the litigations. No. It is not like that. It is for consent. And consent is informed decision. Answer is A. I'm not asking you the question today because I know yeah, it is ethics, but I'm just giving you the idea. What is the vignette and how they're asking the question. So you should know all the options. It is not like jump to the answer. That okay, I think B is the answer. No. First, Whatever you are selecting, for example, A or B. Okay, I got the one answer. Either A or B, somebody answer me. Now, if I'm selecting A, why A? And why not B? If you have that clarification, you are good to give the exam. So this is your PC return. Okay, you know truly structure. You know everything. Still, you have to get the idea. So they are asking a lot of things. They are asking about, so this is the domain, professionalism. Okay. So the question is musculoskeletal and the domain is professionalism. Okay. During assessment, client is found to have the shoulder pain, shoulder to elbow, muscle guarding in the shoulder, limited elbow extension. So your vignette is fully is one. And now the question is, pain is described, patient, pain is disturbed with the sleep. Physiotherapy is concerned about the adhesive capsulitis. So now it is another scenario. Which pattern of limitation would indicate the client has a capsular pattern of restriction? They are, so this is your keyword. What is the capsular pattern in the shoulder joint? Give me the answer. 
So giving the answer is not the uh, any uh, punishment. It is always give the answer. I prefer my student always give the answer. So it is it is good. If you give wrong, you are getting the clarification. And if you get get the right answer, it is good. Okay. So always give the answer. Very good. I am happy. So far, everyone gives the correct answer. So capsular pattern is the external rotation is more limited than the abduction and the internal rotation. So this is a scoring question. Got it? That way, Vignette is asking. It is given in the website. So I just took the capture over here. Same way, there are a few other questions and then related to this movement. Okay. Any question regarding Vignette style? Which of the following treatment should be included in physiotherapy initial treatment for the client's shoulder? Sorry? Initial treatment. Hmm. Initial treatment means the pain is not going to be stiff. So, the pain is not going to be stiff. Which of the following treatment should be included in the physiotherapy initial treatment? Right. Ah, please check. Complete your name, mobilization. Sorry? B, B. B. Perfect. Active assisted range of motion, joint retraction, and grade one. So grade one is for pain inhibition. Right? Mm. Grade three for range of motion. Initially, you are not working with the end range. Grade three is so option A and option C is excluded. Option D, shoulder immobilization. It is going to the again stiffness. So right away answer is option B. Mm. Got it? Six weeks later, the client cast is removed. She is bone density. So now it is another topic. So see, she has bone density. Is the diagnosis of osteoporosis. Which of the intervention should be with cautious with bones hmm. with tenacity? Which of the following intervention should the physiotherapist use with the caution in treatment of client wrist and hand? But the condition is osteoporosis. So the answer is mobilization. See. Yes, joint mobilization. We cannot give with. We, we it's not like we cannot give. We have to give with precaution. So it is a relative contraindication. So there are two type of contraindication: absolute and relative. That way we have to. So your big net is fully structure, but the first question is ethics. Second question is shoulder. Third question is initial treatment, and the fourth question is osteoporosis. So they are rotating with all the conditions. Okay. So this is your PC written exam. You have to prepare with this way. Topics, ortho, neuro, cardio, pulmonary, integumentary systems like the skin, dermatitis, psoriasis, all these burns, um, pregnancy, like, like that is all integumentary system. Other systems like the hemophilia, sickle cell anemia, endocrine diabetes, obesity, thyroid, parathyroid hormone, Pediatrics, geriatrics, therapeutic modalities, ultrasound, tens, ethics. So global means, so in my academy, I'm gonna cover everything, every of that thing. So what is the written classes in my academy? So I'm covering this one as a theoretical class. So theoretical class is a different. And when you are done with the theoretical class, and for example, you are in midway of your credential, Everything is done, at least is done, online course is done, and you are planning to give your exam in May 2024, for example. So you, you took my June batch, so June, July, August, September, approximately three to four months I'm taking for the theoretical class. Every class, I'm giving the material, I'm giving the, rec so whatever, so right now I'm taking lecture. So whatever live lecture, convert into the recording lecture, you have access of the recording lecture until your exam. That is your theoretical portion in the Global Physio Academy. Once theory is done and you are planning to give your exam in May 2024, I'm starting mentoring. Mentoring means I'm preparing you with this type of question answer. Theory is a different story. It gives you the base idea. But going with the question answer, with the speed, because one question, one minute, right? 50 question, one hour. So one hour is the 60 minute. Out of 60 minutes, you have to go with the 50 question. So I am do the mentoring. I'm preparing you guys with the question answer. I'm preparing you more than like 
minimum, like minimum more than like, uh, I'm not giving the number, but range more than like uh, 3,000, 4,000 questions, more than that. Uh, along with that, I'm also giving you the mock test. So like a prelim exam. So you are going for the board exam, same way. So in the May, you are going for the main exam. Before that, I'm giving you the mock test, two mock tests, which give you the idea what type of the test it is and how, how to do the test within a time frame. So this is, is a one bunch. You can get everything in one PC written classes. Okay. So reading style is the lecture. So then you can get the idea what to read because everything is given. What to read, how to read, that is important. So lecture, then read the book. Kishnar, Maggie, Therapy and is a special book for the preparation. Uh, Sulevan for the neuro, Red and Chunk for the cardiopulmonary. Um, what else? Uh, there are another books are also there, but main are the Kishnar, Maggie, Sulevan, Therapy and they are the main book. Make a note and then prepare with the question answer. So this is your overall reading style. I am available 24 by 7 for my student anytime. You can contact me, you can ask me the question. I'm happy, actually I'm happy. That's why I'm for, uh, for like I'm, that's why I'm here for you, okay? So I'm here to give you all the answers, all the queries, and at least I'm happy you are asking the question. That gives you the, gives me the idea that you are getting it, you are going with the questions, you are going with the materials, and you need to go with it. Don't go with this MSK. MSK means musculoskeletal, you have to go to the close pack position, loose pack position, capsular pattern of the joint, mobilization, conditions, examination, treatment, operative versus non-operative, rehab with the precaution. So this is the generalized idea, okay? Every topic, for example, elbow joint, wrist joint, every topic going with same sequence. That is your reading style. Uh, what book should be referred for biomechanics? Kishna, for PC, okay? JSF, Joint Structure and Function is good book. Uh, Maggie, yes, biomechanics, Maggie is an excellent book. You can refer, but for PC written exam, Kishna and Maggie more than it. But every page you have an idea. Today, if you are asking me, Mamta, what is the chapter number 14 in Krishna? Definitely it's fine. Everything, every chapter, every num page number has to be like her. basic. This PC written exam is your basic exam. It is not the advanced exam. It is a just basic. But your basics, your funda has to be clear. Then this exam is very easy. So written exam, 200 questions, four hour exam, computer based, 80% vignette style, and 20 to 30 standalone question like this. So standalone means just one question, and then you jump with another question. Answer the question. Uh, Rushel, I'm giving you this answer later on once your question is done. Four. Patient comes with a complaint of, okay, you have a uh, problem with reading. Complaint of pain at the base of MCP joint on the palmar aspect. Initially, finger is stuck and then straightened with audible click sound. But now finger is locked. Patient has to manually unlock the finger. Therapist, what, here therapist, what should he expect? Deputed contracture, so contracture is not straight on the finger. Rupture of the central slip of the extensor tendon is a bottleneck deformity. Rupture of the lateral band of the extensor tendon is one neck deformity associated with the rheumatoid arthritis. But inflammation of the flexor digitorum tendon that is associated with the trigger finger. So the answer is four. So you should know, very good Pradeep, you should know every option, at least basic idea. You should know, okay? Then you can get the answer. 
it is very basic question okay you are not getting this type of the simple question in your exam okay one question i am getting it here is what about the questions of operation related or tendon transfer whatever scope of physiotherapy practice so maximum protection phase in the kishnan if you open the book for example acl tendon rehab okay so already acl tendon rehab maximum protection phase moderate protection phase control like return to the functional activities that everything you have to go with the so you have to understood that physiotherapy option do not dig yourself with the operation you are not the surgeon to go with the operation selection of the prosthesis or selection of the implement implant we are not going to go with that only we are going with the physiotherapy scope of practice what as a physiotherapist you going to do so before operation pre operative and post operative post operative divided into the maximum protection phase moderate protection and the minimum protection and ethics question because patient is afraid of exam of afraid of the uh, surgery or patient's wife asking some question canadian ethics does not allow you to disclose any of the patient information to any of the relatives without their consent so if patient say yes you are good to give me good to give information to my wife you can give but if patient's consent is not present you are not supposed to say single word to his wife you just go with ask your husband i need your husband permission to disclose his personal information that's it so that is ethics so you may end up with the question of ethics you may end up with the question of the precaution contraindication so that is the way of exam clear rusha perfect okay what after clear the written exam so total three try of written exam and i prefer do not think you have a three try think only you have a one try because that waste of your time waste of your money waste of your preparation so never like always prepare thoroughly and then give the exam if rare case if you are not getting the positive marks do not discourage yourself that is a rare case but one if you have to go with the full preparation then go with the exam exam is exam it is not a new story so sometimes the having a fear that is the main uh, terrorist for us understand the scenario understand the exam understand the basics understand the fundamentals you are good once you clear the written exam so this is the all over the canada is the same and if you have a mentor you can work as a resident pt at least for one year until your clinical exam is not proceed so decide what you want to do you want to work as a pta and earn the basic salary of the canadian market or you want to work as a resident pt and per salary minimum start so i am not saying particularly but minimum range is like above 40 35 to like 40 minimum above 40 per hour but it is again you are getting maybe 50 you are maybe getting 38 depending but you are not getting like very very low so what you want to work going to the canada is easy but to become a physiotherapist you need plan so you have to go with the planning and for that your preparation has to be start as possible as early as to so then you can get the direction clear and clinical exam there are total again three trial there are clinical classes are also going on but in the clinical exam it is changed so for example you are going with the ontario there is a ontario clinical exam british columbia clinical exam and some province like manitoba they are not doing the clinical exam so just written exam and you are good to work as a physiotherapist once you have a mentor okay and then after certain hours of working as a resident pt you are eligible to for the registered license but ontario alberta they are the some province having a clinical exam any question credential written exam anything ah uh, pradeep the way you are asking me this is the your student visa this lecture is you can ask me personally i will guide you but this is the regarding the credential process and the written exam 
Any question, anyone so far? Good. So, written exam, clinical exam, become a registered PT. Congratulations. So, that is the overall thing. Okay. And Global Physio Academy always like, but the only I am the, I am an honor and I am the instructor. I'm working with a limited batch for my student. And actually it is a limited student batch as well. Uh, you can contact me Global Physio Academy at the red gmail.com. Instagram, follow me on the page, Instagram page, Global Physio Academy. You can follow me Facebook page as well. And my WhatsApp number right now, uh, star in as per the Canadian, 416-879-1986. Indian local number, I have 915788-84946. WhatsApp is also available on that one. So you can contact me any of that. Clinical, Pradeep, it is a different. Uh, so I have a question. Can you give some idea about the clinical exam? Clinical exam is a scenario. There are a station. Now, right now, they change with the online. So, right, I am here, right? So, in the screen, you have a three thing. There is a model, you as a therapist and examiner. And then examiner asks you the question, there are a station. So, for example, check the shoulder, patient having a shoulder pain and check the shoulder pain. So, how are you going to ask them the question? So, there is a time frame and everything, totally different techniques and all. There is a classes are going on in the clinical exam, the, in the Ontario and everywhere, there are different stories. But this is like a station, same like our clinical exam, practical exam in the college, but it is online. I have a question, intake is September 23. I start my credential now. It is too late for, as I don't know how much about the VC, but now I'm clear. Good. You can ask me Drasti personally as well. You can start right now as well. See, never be late. When you know the information, you can start a process. Because if time gone, it never come back. So gone is gone. Don't think about that. What is the real time is real present time. So start your present, future will be bright. Any question? So you can contact me on my WhatsApp number. At least give me the feedback on my WhatsApp number. I'm planning to make the WhatsApp group as well. So at least you can be with me to uh, like uh, contact with me. You can ask me the questions and every other student also getting the idea what to do next, where to do. So if you're interested, just message me that and involve me in the WhatsApp group or like that. Give me the feedback about this lecture and best of luck for your preparation and always you are getting success. The thing is, you have to decide. Once you decided, follow the correct path, you will get the success. Thank you. I'm gonna, I, I do one thing. I'm gonna do screen, like screenshot of that. So at least I can get the promotion on this. If you are everyone is okay, just a moment. I can. Thank you very much. And best of luck. Contact me. Bye. Take care.